good, we're back in this thing. Today, I'm gonna be showing you how to take any photo and make it moving, super fire. You can do it to any photo and you can post it on Instagram, use it as album covers. You can have it as a Spotify canvas. You can do so much with this and you can upcharge clients to kind of level up the amount of money you're making. I've personally used it on my Instagram before. I really like the way it looks. It's really subtle of an effect, but when done right, it looks really good. If you're new here, what's good? My name's Brian. I make music video tutorials here on YouTube. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do that. I upload three times a week and we're on the road to 100,000 subscribers. Let me just get into the video and show you what I'm talking about and then we can break down this effect. So what made me want to do this tutorial is seeing Midwest album. I thought it was a super fire album and just the uh, Spotify canvas had this moving photo. You can see here, I already have a tutorial on something really, really similar. So I just want to go back and kind of show you the new methods I've picked up. Just a little bit extra sauce and maybe a more efficient way of doing this effect. You can see his legs are moving. There's a little bit of shake in the camera, some blur. Just really subtle things that can take a simple photo like this and turn it into something a little bit more dynamic and just looks a little bit more intriguing. So here on my Instagram, if you're not already following me, go ahead and follow me at Brian Delmata. But I did do these a pretty long time ago, actually, uh, November 17th, 2020. Got the piece of paper falling, his leg extending. This one, we got the camera movement and the background moving a little bit. I think that one's really fire. There's a bunch of different ways you can do this. So let's go into Photoshop, break it down, and then we're gonna have to move it over to After Effects. All right, so now that we're in Photoshop, what you want is you just wanna drag in any image that you wanna do this to. You can pretty much do it to any image. I would suggest having something where like the limbs kind of would make sense to be moving, right? Like if they're standing on the ground, you probably wouldn't wanna move their legs back and forth unless you were like making it look like they're running because it wouldn't really make sense. This photo is like perfect for making his legs move. So I like that, but it wouldn't really make sense to like make his arm bend or anything in this one. So while you can do this to every photo, just make sure it makes sense when you're doing it. Because if something like is like unrealistic, it's really going to stick out. And if something was like a more realistic, like his legs wobbling here, the viewer isn't going to really even pick up on that. It's just going to be like a subtle thing that interests them a little bit more. So the first step I do when doing this is I mask out the limbs or the part that I want to move. So here can see we had kind of have his leg right like this and goes around and I'm going to pick up the shadow as well because if you were to move your leg to left or right the shadow would be picked up and kind of cast over his other part of the leg so I'm going to kind of mask out here probably go right around there I would suggest using the pen tool I think that's probably going to be your best option I wouldn't really use anything else for this one if you're just clicking around if you click and drag you can bend it so I'm just clicking and dragging around these bends try to be as precise as possible the cleaner you are with everything here, the better it's going to look. I'm going to go a little fast for the tutorial sake. So it might not look absolutely perfect. This is one of the ones that you definitely want to spend time on. And if you're executing it right, it's going to look crazy good. I think the one they did in the album cover and the Spotify canvas for Midwest looks really good. And I think not many people were picking up that it was an actual photo. So you can see here, I did pick up that shadow. And the reason I did that is because again, if he was moving his leg and like the photo was taken, there would still be a shadow cast on his leg. So you just got to think about things like that. Logistically, it is more of like a thinking thing. And you might do something and then realize a little bit later on, oh, that doesn't really make sense. So you can always go back by clicking Control Z. And I'll be showing you some ways that you can go back and forth between After Effects and Photoshop and make sure that you have everything done right. So once you do mask out the limb that you want or whatever you want to move, you can move someone's head, a bird in the background, a door, basically anything. Once you do have that masked out, you can right click, make selection, click OK. And then I click Control J or Command J on the Mac. And then you can see what we have masked out. I think this looks really clean. You can move it around, kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like. Obviously, we have to fix this so it doesn't show this behind here. And we're going to be moving it to After Effects in a second to really test out what we need to fill. But let's go ahead and do that other leg real quick. This one is a little bit more tricky. That might look a little weird, but we can go back and fix it. So then I'm going to make selection, click Control J. Now you can see if I turn off the layers, you can see what we have masked out. That's his legs. That looks pretty good to me. I think it might look a little weird with his leg moving here. So I'm actually going to go back before the selection and maybe just go from there to there. I think it will just look better. Yeah, I think that overall just moving is going to look a little bit better. And then go and turn back on that background layer. If you guys don't already have my ultimate texture bundle, I'd highly suggest you go out and get it. There's so many use cases for this pack, and I'm just going to go and drag on some kind of paper texture just to add a little bit more depth. You can add this to basically anything. I have tutorials on how to make music video transitions, overlays, Spotify canvases. If you're interested in this video, I suggest you check out my other Spotify canvas video where I use this pack a little bit more. We come up with something pretty fire, and I think it'll help you make more money as an editor and director, being able to charge more money for your Spotify canvases, album covers, all that stuff. So you can see here, I just put in a paper texture, turned to the screen, and it just adds a little bit more of the depth. Honestly, this is a really good photo and it probably doesn't need it, but I just like adding my own little sauce to each thing. So that's what I went ahead and did. So now what I'm gonna do before I fill in the background behind his leg, I want to go ahead and file, save this as, 
and we can do name this cutout tutorial or something, save it as a PSD or a Photoshop file, and then go into After Effects and drag in that Photoshop file. It's going to prompt you an import kind. Make sure to do composition, retain layer sizes, and then editable layer styles instead of merge layer styles. Double click on the composition it creates for you. So you can see it imports all these layers that we have, the paper texture, the two legs in the background. What I'm going to do is go and zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing and then go to the transform options. And I'm actually going to go up here to the pan behind or the anchor point tool. You can get there by pressing Y. And I wanna move the anchor point of this leg to his joint. Normally when you're doing something with a limb, you kind of want to put it on a joint. That way it just makes sense. It wouldn't make sense if his leg was rotating from the center or down here. You want to do it around joints and you'll see what I mean in a second if I go and rotate it now. At least that looks a little bit more realistic. Obviously we don't want to do that much, but if you go back and forth, that looks a little bit better than if the anchor point was somewhere like here because it wouldn't make sense for it to be rotating from the center. So let's go ahead and put it right on his kneecap and then keyframe the rotation and go, this timeline is really long. Let's trim it down. So I'm going to go two seconds in and have the rotate go out a little bit, maybe something like that, three, and then let's go roughly another two seconds, maybe not exactly. So it's not like super robotic looking and then bring it back down to zero. I'm going to highlight both of those and ease ease them by clicking F9. Now, when we play that, you can see it rotates, but obviously you can see his foot already behind him. And that's why I wanted to bring it into After Effects so you can go and kind of visualize where you need to fix because we don't need to really do anything on the right hand side of the photo because it's not going to be going out of there. So we just need to fix this area of his foot right here down in the bottom. You can see if we're in Photoshop, let's just go ahead and I'll show you what I mean that we can go back and forth. If I take this brush and I paint red right here and click Control S or save the Photoshop file, you can see instantly once we go back into After Effects, it's going to link that up. So now we can go and let's turn off these leg layers. I want to replace this area, remove his foot down here and the texture of his shoe. So to do that, I found the best tool is the clone stamp tool. If you're not familiar, you can change the size of the brushes with the brackets, or you can go up here and change the size by clicking Alt on your keyboard and selecting an area. I can now drag this and click and drag and extend the area I'm at. And I'm kind of just following these lines on the floor because you don't want to mess up the lines on the floor. So just try to make it as realistic as possible. I'm going in and out by selecting Alt, picking new areas. I think it's good to grab a bunch of different areas. Maybe change the size a little bit and we can extend that here, here. And I'm just picking new areas, moving it in. Now you can see if I turn back on that leg layer, if I move it, there's nothing behind it. It looks like the the floor is extended and that's exactly what we want. So going back and turning off that leg layer, you can just keep on extending. And then we have to I'm gonna scroll in here, I'm gonna pick areas around here. And we don't want that texture of that shoe because it's very clear when like the same patterns are the same. So I'm just taking a little bit of the shadow and bringing it in. We don't need to do too, too much, I don't think. I can't remember exactly what the farthest point that in is. So let's go ahead and do that. And we can click control S and save that. Go back into After Effects. And if we can find the area where it moves the most. So for us, we keyframe this out to three rotation wise. You can see we kind of need a fix here because we got the same texture here and maybe a little up the left hand side of his leg, but it looks pretty good right here. I'm going to do a little bit of touching up. And the nice thing is you can just go back and forth and fix these things. So for example, here, I'm taking this area and I'm just extending it down because that's how it would make sense, right? Like if this line continued down this way, if you were to remove his leg, that's how his, that's how it would extend. So I just try to think most logically on what things would look like behind each other. Obviously, sometimes it's hard and depending on your photo, it might be different. But here I'm just touching this up, kind of blend that in. And this part is a lot of finessing and it might not look absolutely perfect, but I'm going to be showing you some things that you can do later on to fix it. Let's go ahead and control S that to save it. And we can see that's looking a little bit better. Obviously, some of the textures are repeating. The paper texture is going to help cover it up a little bit. Blur that we're going to use to cover it up. There's going to be a lot of things that we're going to do to finesse this a little bit more. It's all about like those little finesse things. And honestly, if you're this far zoomed out or this far zoomed out, you can barely even tell that there's something behind there. So I think it's starting to look good. Now for right now, let's go to the other layer bring up that anchor point tool again you can see it's right here so let's move it to his knee and then again going to the beginning keyframing that rotation and I'm going to press U on that other layer just to see where we kind of finished off the movement you don't have to have it on the exact same point for the sake of tutorial I will you can have them offset a little bit so it doesn't look like super robotic and let's move his leg the I think the opposite way would probably be the easiest. Also, sometimes you just want to do what's going to be the easiest right so if we go in this way we have to come up with a texture for here here, all these different things. And there's just a bunch of lines. 
Whereas if we rotate it this way, we only have to really like cover up a few things. So I think that's the way we're gonna do it. Do two, let's do something really subtle and then go to the end, click reset. I'm gonna highlight all of these F9 to easies. And now when we play that, you can see we have a little bit that we need to cover up here, but it's not too much and I think it's pretty doable. So let's go back into Photoshop. We need to extend the shadow here bring up the brush size. It's a bunch of just tweaking. Like I said, all it really comes down to is changing this to make it look like it extends. So now you can see like, for example, if you're having a hard time understanding what I'm saying, it basically, obviously his shoe was here a second ago, but now it looks like this ticket booth extends out that way. And that's what we want. I think if we extend the shadow, I think it will look fine. So let's go ahead and do that. Like I said, we can always go back and change it. So I'm going to click Control S and go back into After Effects. And honestly, that's looking pretty good. There are some things that look a little off there, but I think when you're zoomed out, it's really not going to do too much. Obviously, the more time you take and tweak it, the better. Some things I would do is I would use this blur tool here, turn down the strength to something like 10, and you can just kind of blur these areas where we did do this texture. That way it just kind of loses a little bit of detail. I think this will help out a lot, actually. So I'm just blurring all these edges right here, clicking and dragging. So one thing I would do is go to filter, noise, add a little bit of noise, nothing too crazy. Since this photo does already have a lot of noise or grain on it, I'm just gonna add like one just to mask it a little bit. Now that blur doesn't look as noticeable. And if we click Control S and go back into After Effects, I think that area looks really good actually. Now what I'm gonna do is highlight all of these layers by clicking on the bottom layer and then clicking on the top layer while holding shift, right click, go to pre-compose and we're gonna name this camera movement and then go and click down on the drop down. go to transform. I'm gonna keyframe the scale and we're gonna start it off pretty zoomed in. Let's go and fit this so we can see what we're working with. Start pretty zoomed in and I actually wanna move the position also a little bit, maybe more focused on him keyframe that as well. And then let's go to the end. So if we want to figure out where those keyframes ended, go into the composition itself and go out and it should be at the same spot your cursor should. So I'm going to control click on position and scale, right click and reset, and then easy ease those as well. I'm going to turn on this motion blur and turn on that motion blur as well. That way there's just a little bit of blur with the zoom out. And obviously there's that parental advisory thing that you would add on after for the sake of tutorial you understand what i'm getting at so now we can go and add some other effects on here let's add some gaussian blur i think gaussian blur hides a lot of stuff and i think it just looks good too so i'm going to click repeat edge pixels and start off the blurriness maybe right around 3.7 it's going to be dependent on your photo and then let's go and click u on our keyboard to bring up the keyframes and we can go maybe I want the blurriness to end right around here so we can go and and make it zero maybe a little bit longer and we'll easy ease those as well and then one thing i would also add is sapphire shake just to add a little bit of that camera movement on it you can see obviously when we had that on that's a lot let's do the frequency like one and the amplitude 0.1 and see what that gets us. I think I want the amplitude to be maybe more something like 0.5 and we'll see what that looks like. So that is a lot as well. I think I wanna turn off the Z shake. That's looking a little bit better, but it is a little bit too aggressive, I think. So let's go and maybe go in the middle, 0.25. And then I always turn on motion blur for the sapphire shake. It just makes it look a lot better in my opinion. You can do some fine tweaking for your own project. Let's go 0.25. 175. I just want it a little less noticeable with the shake. I think something like that looks really good. And you can have this loop over and over if you really wanted to. So basically what you do is you just mirror what you did. So just copy all the keyframes on the left hand side. Try to do roughly the same distance. I just eyeballed it, but you can go exactly if you really wanted to. Paste it on the right hand side. And then basically what you would do is you would render this area out and then you could loop it depending on what platform you're using. If you upload it to Spotify Canvas, it auto loops it for you. If you wanted to, you could just render this out or copy and paste pre-comp over and over again. But I just want to give you the tools and resources on how to do something like this. I think it's super fire. Like I said, you can add it to Instagram. You can add it to album covers, Spotify canvases. Uh, there's just so much you can do with this. You can even add it in music videos. So I think there's a lot to be done. And uh, once you learn the concept of this, it's super fire. But yeah, guys, if you made it all the way to the end, like always, I do appreciate you. If you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. If you wanted to cop that paper texture pack that I showed in the beginning, you go to my website, briandelmata.com. It supports the channel and you get a really high quality asset in return. Be sure to follow me on all social medias. I'll have them linked down below. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you guys on this one. Peace.